Hi everyone, this is Alberto, an engineer from WebRTC Ventures and today I wanted to make a short video about one of the most popular cloud gaming solutions today, Stydia. I ordered the kit online last year and it was already time to get into it. I think it has been out for about 13 months already and here I will start first unboxing uh, and going through the different pieces of the kit which are pretty basic and then get into the technical aspects of Stydia and of course focusing on the WebRTC part. So let's let's get into what the kit includes. Um, first we see the, the wireless controller uh, with, which looks uh, pretty good. Um, it resembles a bit some of the PS uh, odd controllers. Um, and of course, yeah, it's wireless and it can connect through Wi-Fi to your computer, mobile or Chromecast. A charger and below we can see the Chromecast Ultra uh, for better performance streaming the games. While it's recommended, uh, you could be using your own computer or mobile device directly. And this is just going an uh, optimized way for better Wi-Fi performance, probably better um, video optimizations, but um, it seems it's already, uh, it would work without it. And here, yeah, we have the power supply for the Chromecast. And we will just be replacing our old Chromecast with the Chromecast Ultra. Now we are ready uh, and I'm just setting this up so um, I needed to install the Stydia app and register and so on but it's free uh, what you just need to pay for the games but um, the service in, uh, it's free and I think they offer a free trial um, then once registered I make the pairing with the uh, controller and Chromecast and now we are ready I'm going just to play a fighting game for a few seconds just so you can get a sense of the latency and actually how good it works for being a game that is hosted in the cloud and that you are playing remotely on the edge on your home And of course, I win. <laughs> and now let's talk about um, the technical aspects of Google Stadia. Um, Google Stadia pretty much looks like this image. Archi uh, the architecture have three main elements. Um, this viewing part or the listening part all together in a single device. We have the, at the top uh, the cloud, the Google Stadia architecture and we have the device to send the inputs in, in this case a remote uh, controller but could be a laptop or a phone. So what's the high level architecture? Um, in general um, it looks pretty much like this although it's very simplified. Uh, we have on, from left to right uh, the game which is basically video and audio. It's getting, getting encoded in the Google data center before being sent and then is sent through the internet to our, and reach our home. From there, um, our client uh, could be the laptop, the phone, or Google Chromecast will decode this video and audio and will reach our screens. Um, going upstream, we have also the the commands or the inputs that we send from the uh, controller or uh, the laptop up to the uh, game instance and that also will go through the internet uh, using something called uh, data channels. So um, what's the crucial WebRTC part here? Uh, well first uh, WebRTC uses an API called um, RTC Peer Connection that's in the browser 
and that's going to be used um, for sending outbound audio upstream uh, for well for example if I'm speaking I want other participants to hear me so this type of audio and also we will get inbound video and audio coming from the game or other participants and that's also going to come uh, in this case downstream so we have this uh, peer connection and then we also use the data channel um, in this case not for sending media but for uh, control or commands when we press buttons basically that will be going up and down from from one side to another so from in this image at the right will be from the remote or the controller um, to the uh, to the cloud and to establish this connection we will be using something called ice that we have spoke about in, in other uh, videos um, but basically um, what it does is allow us to connect um, with other uh, peers in this case would one peer would be us at home and the other peer would be the cloud uh, uh, service in Google uh, Studio Network um, and what we do with this is well basically facilitate the connection or be able to to find the right IP um, on both sides so um, yeah and before I pass this out this the choice of uh, WebRTC makes sense because basically it's uh, the streaming protocol that can achieve lower latencies uh, specifically in general sub-second latencies so it, it makes sense for gaming so now let's get into the web, something called WebRTC internals uh, which will let us know what's going on uh, when we are playing and we will see what's uh, what's happening basically on the background while we use Google Stadia so uh, first thing uh, at the top corner you will see something called create dump uh, that's pretty useful to download the uh, logs that you got otherwise you will lose them when the browser is closed so that's uh, yeah something I usually do and download locally just in case but now let's see what's what's going on uh, while uh, we are on uh, Stadia and when we establish the connection so this is a ordered set of events that happen when we start Stadia uh, connecting with uh, connecting our laptop with the Stadia server and we can see that the, there is an offer answer there is the um, a set of ice candidates that are uh, a change for being able to connect with, from uh, our home to uh, studio servers and at the end we have the connection state change uh, to connect it which means that we are already connected to, to studio um, we can see some very useful information here about for example the offer or the answer in our case that uh, uh, well, we send uh, on the remote description of it uh, and here we will see yeah, uh, some of the codecs or, or yeah, uh, profiles that we use for example but if you don't want to go through this which can be a bit complex to understand there are also other ways like uh, if you open this uh, RTC inbound RTP audio for example if we want to check the audio uh, you will be able to uh, see for example that is opus the audio that is being sent from Stadia and you could see also um, the byte received per second and how it, these values keep changing uh, during time uh, let's see for example uh, for video uh, is this one at below so the video coming from Stadia um, also in this case is using H.264 which is interesting because usually uh, Google have been promoting a bit more or using more uh, BP8 or BP9 but I guess in this case it made sense to um, build something that is ca it can be used in the most uh, amount the larger amount of devices and since Apple uh, until recently only supported H.264 um, probably that uh, is going to help um, uh, and that's why this actually works on Safari and also probably because uh, it's 264 hardware acceleration have 
happen to be pretty good and you can see a, a big difference if, if you happen to have a device with that. Um, also, it's interesting here at the top uh, that uh, we can see the, the i servers, and in this case, we don't use a turn, which makes sense because uh, we are connecting with a public accessible uh, server, uh, Google Stadia. So, in theory, stone should be enough, and if it's not, probably it's your fault. <laughs> so, it's just um, some maybe network configuration that you might need to do if you are using a very restrictive firewall or, or things like that but you would need to open to Stadia in this case. And yeah, we see that it's using unified plan here, which is uh, the newer uh, SDP, SDP semantic. And yeah, now let's see the stats, which are a little bit more nicer to see and interesting. So if we go down here below, we can see the data channel, which is what we use to send commands upstream to, to Stadia. And we can see, interestingly, uh, commands are being sent periodically and received as well. So it seems there is some kind of communication, even if we are not pressing buttons uh, between the game in Stadia servers and us. And also we could see the inbound audio and video that is coming from, from the Stadia server. So for example, here we can see the video and we can see the beats per second which went up to around eight or seven at some peaks and sometimes below two megabytes per second, uh, which still is, still is a decent quality. Um, and we can also see a lot of fluctuations in the frames, uh, which is trying to be stable at 60, but when my network in this case is not great, so it uh, went down to, to below 20 in some short periods of time which is great because that's what allows us to basically keep playing even if our network um, fluctuates um, yeah uh, i think there are uh, many more things to talk but i think this is a quite interesting overview um, yeah hopefully if you are starting with WebRTC or curious about the studio um, this was interesting and um, yeah feel free to reach us anytime if you have questions or suggestions for future uh, blogs or video blogs thank you for watching